Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Our guest today is a certified bucket. Now, when he's not dominating the internet with all types of viral clips, shooting with all the knives in the hoops and all that, <laughs> that craziness and the moving baskets, he's working with some of the biggest and brightest names in the game. Yeah. Now, the government knows him as Chris Matthews, <laughs> but y'all know him as Lethal Shooter. <laughs> we appreciate you pulling up. Thank you, man. We got a, we got a makeshift studio audience here of about four. So, you know. hey, at first, I thought you were just talking about me. No, no, no. When you're talking about Shooter, you know what I mean? Bring the internet on the shitty saying. Once you start putting knives in, I was like, okay. That's his intro. Every time with the knives, and I see you be sacrificing balls. Uh -huh. And as a real hooper, it pains me every time I see one of the balls to play. But I appreciate the hustle. And even though, you know, you the big balls with the janky yep. rims and all yep. the small rims and all that good stuff. But all right, let's go back. because They call you Lethal Shooter. So yep. I want to know, what is the origin of that nickname? Yeah, so, you know, I played in the DMV area um, in high school. My dad used to call me Lethal, but not Shooter. Mm -hmm. So when I made my Instagram page, I couldn't come up with no names. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, well, like, what can I come up with? So I was like, let me just call myself Lethal Shooter. Mm -hmm. And uh, thankfully, nobody took that name. Okay. Uh, and now, still to this day, you know, it's, it's a blessing that people around the world um, know me by Lethal Shooter. So it's definitely good that I came, like, with his name. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Like, <laughs> yeah. Everybody around the world uh, know his name as well. So to come up with, like, clever names like that, and basketball, and it sticks with you, it's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. So how crazy is it, though? Because everywhere you go, like, a lot of people don't know the government name. Yeah. They know yeah. Lethal Shooter. But how crazy when you walking around? What did they say? Lethal? They say Lethal Shooter? Like, <laughs> yeah. Lethal Shooter? Like, how did they? Yeah. Uh, it's, I really don't, it don't really matter to me. I don't find it as, like, disrespect. Like, yeah. a good example, I went to the Final Four. I had to do some stuff with the NCAA, and all the grown men was like, Lethal, Lethal, Lethal. Yeah. So what I do is, like, when somebody say, oh, what's up, Lethal? I was like, man, nice to meet you. What's your name? And then the person might say, Tom, I said, my name's Chris. Just yeah. so the person can know mm -hmm. that my name is Chris. Um, sure. But I, I, I'm not one of the people that I'm in public. I built a brand. It's like, man, my name ain't lethal. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm just yeah. happy that people know me. Well, no, it's like it's like rapper, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like nobody calls Snoop Dogg Calvin Brothers. Like, yeah. I'm but, like, you know, but that's the fun, but that's the funny part because yeah. someone will create a name. Yeah. The name gets hot. Yeah. Then you they get offended yeah. that you actually use it. Yeah. Like, that's what I know. I don't know the other name. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know your real name. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like somebody like a like a dirt. Right? Yeah. I know Lil Dirt. I don't know your real name, so you throw the real name and I'm like, I don't know the f that yeah, is. Yeah. But, and, but people sometimes really get offended. Like, yeah. yo, you should have got famous on your real name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not my problem. I agree. I agree. <laughs> All good. So let's <laughs> jump in this real quick. Obviously, you got one of the most amazing jumpers in the game. You work with a lot of people. But yeah. what's the best advice you can give somebody with a broke jumper? Yeah. How to get their shot right? Uh, honestly, just form shoot, um, master the mid-range jump shot. Um, a lot of people see on my page me shooting threes, but unfortunately in today's youth online, that's like cool. Mm -hmm. For me to shoot far, it, it stimulates kids and, and adults for social media content. But when I train my clients, we honestly, we don't shoot threes. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my clients, let's use Catavis Caldwell Pope. He's one, he's a shooter for the Nuggets, Michael Porter Jr. When we train, the main goal is to master the mid-range jump shot with the footwork. And then at the end of the practice, I'll step them out to the three-point range and then step them out further once we realize that everything is perfect in that way. But I'll say if you're really trying to master the game, master the mid-range jump shot and master form shooting because that's when the muscle memory kicks in mm -hmm. and that's when the uh, mechanics kick in as well. So, you, you'd be surprised that kids that are great at three yeah. aren't great at the mid range, yeah. aren't great at mating layups. Yeah. Right. I went to, I went to, I, I go to tournaments and you'd be surprised how many kids can't make layups, finish right. layups. And, right. You know, like I was telling my son when we first started, this is in the middle of Curry being Curry. Right. Like, yo, like to get to him, right. you have to start here. Absolutely. You can't just jump to try to be Steph Curry mm -hmm. because Steph Curry started here, mm -hmm. mid range college three mm -hmm. or high school three, college three, then mm -hmm. NBA three, then his own range. Mm -hmm. You have to get through all those levels to become this. You just can't start mm -hmm. here and think that you're going to be the Steph Curry because if somebody push you off the line, can you hit the mid range? Can you hit mm -hmm. the floater? Can you make the layup? So mm -hmm. if I'm telling kids, it's like, start at the beginning. Yes. Learn, perfect this part of the right. game, right? You know, spend like, you know, if you're doing a, a three hour workout, right? An hour, should be layups in five, 10 footers. That's it. The first hour. Mm -hmm. Next hour, mid range. Mm -hmm. Next hour, threes. Mm -hmm. You know, work on all three categories, just not sitting at the three point line all day. Absolutely. And a good, and a good example is like one of my clients, Cole Anthony. Mm -hmm. So since he's so explosive, we had to teach him how to cut off his quick twitch for the art of shooting. So the second half of the season, oh he, got, he got better. <laughs> 
He got what? No, keep <laughs> on. Oh, he got better at understanding how to calm himself down with the three, but most importantly, the mid range jump shot. But the thing is, like he's saying, the mid range and the three is different than the floater for him because it's different type of twitches. So we can't have him with a floater. Go. He still has to be soft with the left. He has to, but when it's time to cut the killer on, he got to be able to cut that quick twitch mm -hmm. on to break somebody's face. So what he's saying is absolutely correct. And a good example is Cole Anthony that has to have basically like four layers to his game to be complete uh, because of his size. And most importantly, he has to do everything. He has to shoot three, has to shoot a mid range, has to shoot a floater, has to shoot a left hand hook shot. Um, he has to be able to finish all around the basket and he has to make other people better. So that's very important. You said something that I couldn't put in words. I, yeah. I, I've been trying to explain it, but you said it yeah. perfect. Learning how to turn off your quick twitch. Yeah. So, so when someone sees Ben Simmons and Westbrook yeah. and wonder why they can't shoot yeah. because they haven't figured out how to turn off this, the, 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 the balance, the, the fast yeah. twitch muscle. Yeah. To slow down yeah. for those shots, yeah. which you know, for most kids that are fast and explosive, that is very important very for important. shooting jumpers. Yes, right, and that's the reason Ben Simmons and those type of guys can't shoot moving yes. because their fast twitch muscle is still going. Yes, and they have not learned how to turn it off because a lot of people can't identify with that. No, they can't, and that's that what that's amazing. what I do. Like a good example too is Grayson Allen people don't realize he has like a 42 inch vertical. Mm, yeah. So what we had to do uh, last season, he shot 40 plus, this season shoot 40 plus. So like he's saying, I'll put you under duress. And then once we get out of the duress, out of that hard period, you have to learn how to cut it off, which I can teach people mm -hmm. how to, people that are explosive, how to cut that off to be relaxed when they shoot. Because if you can't balance those two, if I blow past you real quick and I use that same energy to shoot, you're gonna hit the back of the rim. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? So it's very important. <laughs> it's just true though. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta really learn how to uh, balance that out. Yeah. And you work with a lot of younger guys too, right? High absolutely, school level. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. So we talk about Steph all the time. Steph, probably the greatest shooter in history. Again, I'm, yeah. I'm a Slim Stoudemire fan. Yeah. That's, that's just me personally. Yeah. But I feel like Steph, and people have talked about this, is kind of ruined grassroots basketball because people want to shoot the 35, 40 footers. But like you saying, Gil, they don't want to work on the other shit, not realizing that Steph mastered every level of that game to get to be able to do those shots. So do you find that a lot with the guys that you work with and how do you try and guide them and get them away from that to be like, look, get your midi right, get the layup package right, and then you can step out beyond the arc and start doing the, the Steph-like stuff. Yeah, I agree. So like I evaluate for EYBL and I'm a shooting coach for the academy. And the biggest thing that we preach is honestly um, mid-range and threes. Mm -hmm. So we are at EYBL event and the kid does take certain shots that he shouldn't take. You know, it's my job that after the game, we let him understand. Of course, if it's three seconds left in the game, if it's three seconds left at the end of a shot clock, mm -hmm. or if it's uh, just something that you have to take a shot that deep, do it. I wouldn't say Steph Curry ruined the game. I think the trainers and the parents yeah, are ruining sure. the kids. It ain't you know Steph. I mean? It ain't Steph. It's not, it's not his job. So I feel like, you know, the trainers have to do a better job that, you know, if I'm your trainer and I come to your game and we're playing uh, Thaddeus Young team or we're, or we're playing uh, somebody's team from New Jersey and you take a shot like that, that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. But if you come down the court and it's like three seconds left in the game, you have to take that shot, we're happy with it. Because you should train for certain type of shots as a shooter. You mm -hmm. should train off balance. You Because we do that with Grayson and and, um, and Bobby Portis and Michael Porter Jr. I'll have, I, like Michael Porter likes to shoot off one leg, but that's not a shot he's going to shoot when he's wide open. Mm -hmm. So if you noticed the game yesterday, Steph Curry had a, a, a game a game time three. So I was with the Kings uh, this weekend to help the Kings. And people say that was a bad shot that Steph took when he took the one legger uh, yeah. shot from three. But to Steph, that's a great shot yeah. mm -hmm. because that's probably a shot that people don't know that he's practiced 1,000 times now. A kid sees that, and they're going to have a game winner at EYBL one of these games, and they take that shot because they saw oh, Steph take it. Mm -hmm. If they take that shot, that's not Steph's fault. That's the people who train the kid to understand that you took that shot. You're not working on it, so why did you take that shot? But you should practice unorthodox shots because I'm a huge fan of that, and that's why a lot of my clients can shoot really under duress. Yeah. yeah. And that that is – when Jordan was sticking his tongue out, doing yeah. those moves, did, did he mess the game up? Now, I'm not even saying it's No, 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 but, but what I'm saying is, does he mess the game up because everybody wants to mimic it? When you had people coming in, the sorry-ass players That's coming in with the new Jays, you got the band red <laughs> head here, Michael Jordan 23, we already knew you sucked. Yeah. That was right. We knew you sucked, yeah, yeah. right? Because no real, no real hooper dresses like Michael Jordan right, right. all around. <laughs> now... Did Kobe ruin it when everybody wanted to mimic Kobe? Yeah. Everything we did, trash can Kobe, yeah. right? So 
But that lets you know how great Steph Curry is. Yeah. To the point where he can influence culture. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He can influence culture. Yeah. But then you have to blame ESPN yeah. and all of those guys because those are the highlights that you're yeah. putting on. Yeah. Now, you don't have a disclaimer that says, hey, hold on, guys. Yeah. Curry takes 700 shots a day. And that's yeah. my point. Right? He takes yeah. this. He does this. Yeah. this yeah. He just doesn't come out here yeah. and he nah. just takes the, the guys, the, 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 um, the Kyries, mm-hmm. the Lucas, the mm-hmm. moves you guys are seeing, mm-hmm. they've, they're doing it over yeah. and over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. It's not just three shots like this and then let's move on to the next drill. Mm -hmm. We were taking hundreds Mm -hmm. of those type of shots. And if you don't understand that as a trainer, Mm -hmm. then you're you're doing a disjustice to these kids. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And that's not my part. You know, I'm not saying Steph or Mike or these people. The thing is, you see Steph do it. I watched the game on ESPN. I saw Steph do it. I can just go out there. Right. Like, no, you didn't see the thousand shots he took in practice Mm -hmm. to do that shit. Same thing with Mike. I'm looking at Mike on your sweatshirt right now. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Kids would pick number 23, AAU youth level, and it's like... You, you, you haven't earned like the right to wear that earned. number. Yeah. You haven't earned, bro. Like you got to pick you the janky earned, number. Bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. More <laughs> times than not, you see 23 on the court, like, you you are not Michael Jordan. There's, right? there's like, certain numbers, bro. Like, if you don't have this type of game, yeah. don't get this number. Yeah. This is important. Numbers are very I important know. sometimes. It is. You, it is. Come on, goddammit. <laughs> like, if you got on 30, you're supposed to be a shooter. Yeah. yeah. Right? Now, that's, 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 yeah. if you got 30 on, you supposed to be the shooter on this team. We right. supposed to identify your talent with your number. Right. But it's crazy because Steph with the 30, but 20 years ago, nobody gave a shit man. about 30. No, right? I'm just saying, you big, you man, you big man with the 30, yeah. you should be benched. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck on the bench. Get your sorry ass on the bench, man. You ain't know. <laughs> so nowadays, we joke about the whole IG trainer phenomenon. Right. And I'm sure you get a little bit of that heat, too. Absolutely. But people don't realize that you actually live your rap. So yeah. I want you to give our audience your basketball background so yeah. they can know you're not full gays. You actually want to <laughs> No, I play uh, high school in DMV area. I played with KD. Mm-hmm. Um, out of four years, I went to the championship three times. Um, I was a McDonald uh, All-American nominee. I went to the Pac-10, which back then, you know, the Pac-10, Aaron Afalo, yeah. you played in the Pac-10. Yeah. Um, I had to go against Mustafa Shakur. Um, I was blessed to uh, go to the Sweet 16 with Washington State. I transferred to St. Bonaventure uh, where I broke all the three-point records, which was a blessing because I only played two years and great players like Van Der Poel and J.R. Bremer, they played for four years and I broke almost all their records for three-pointers. Um, my senior year, I was top five in the nation in threes made. I was number one in the A-10 in threes made, number one in shooting percentage. Um, so I've done some great things. You yeah. know, I played overseas for seven years. I played in China, Russia, um, but you know, the, the thing that I love about Instagram is, you know, the people do nine out of 10 who make fun of other people, they didn't do it. Yeah. So I don't really care what people think about me on social media. As long as my peers that I grew up with, like Kevin, Nolan Smith, Mike Beasley, mm-hmm. Jeff Green, all them, uh, Jared Jack, I used to train with him. Mm-hmm. Um, that long as they know, and in, in, in the world, the hoopers that I used to be around know, you know, one of my mentors is Craig Hodges. You know, he was one of my coaches overseas. Craig Hodges seen me score 22 points in a quarter before. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And these are things that people don't know about me because I'm not I don't use Instagram to show how great I am back then. I use Instagram for what it's for. And that's to just be creative yeah, and, sure. and, and use it for what, it's, what it is. I don't I don't spend my time trying to um, use it to show people what I've done. I don't care what they think about me. You know what yeah. I mean? But I am one of the trainers that have um, laid the foundation um, for, for basketball. For AAU, I played for DC Assault. Mm-hmm. Um, Back then we had the, the super we had the super sixty four. I broke all those three point records mm-hmm. and the super and back then the Adidas circuit was just crazy. it was a war. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. That's what people don't know about me as well. Like my only job, like he was saying, I, I had to come in and I gotta shoot every shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which was a blessing. I was blessed to go against LeBron and the soldiers mm-hmm. and high school. Because my, my high school, we didn't play our normal high school. We went to Slam Dunk to the Beach. We went to NBA Hall of Fame. We went to Warner. We went to all the top tournaments. So we had to go against Charlie Venueva. We had to go against, and these are tournaments with me and Kevin. I'm scoring like 20, Kevin scoring 20. It's not like I'm just this bench guy. We, we going to work. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, I should post more, but like I said, I don't care. Yeah, when I talk about IG trainers, I'm not talking about yourself, but right. I'm sure you even see it now too, and I see it in this landscape where these dudes be charging 100, 150 an hour, right. and it's like, what's your resume, right. Chief? Like, you know, right. you, you right. just picking off of what other people have done, but you haven't right. really done it. More power to them, obviously. Right. It's a business and a hustle. But I look at the parents too, sometimes I'm like, yo, you just throwing that money down the drain. No, yeah, no, no, listen, being a trainer right now is technically a hustle. Yeah. 
right? Um, all you have to technically do is just go to the internet, get a, get some moves, right? Get some moves, and then just say, oh, this is what I can do. Now yeah. you got all these kids doing all this 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 crazy shit. Yeah. But I always ask, what did the trainer do? What What is your resume? Mm. The reason I ask that is most of us, right, we've learned these new things mm -hmm while we've been done. Mm -hmm. Like we haven't, we're not playing. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at things from YouTube mm -hmm. and then we're trying to put it in someone's game, mm -hmm. not understanding that it's if we game. if we haven't tried it, mm -hmm. right, in the game to actually know how it works. Mm -hmm. So when I'm jotting moves, right, mm -hmm. I'll go on the court, I'll practice it to see how it'll work against the actual defensive player. Mm -hmm. Like what is a deep, like, Kawhi, what is Kawhi gonna be thinking? Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting here throwing the ball in the front. Well, Kawhi's just gonna grab this shit, so I can't go this way. I gotta yeah. go this way away yeah. from him. So <clears throat> all your trainers, all the trainers out there, if you never played at certain levels, mm -hmm. right? You had your skill then, but now you're teaching new skills that you haven't applied, yeah. right? So like sometimes if, if the, the player is active, mm -hmm. then I don't really worry about them because they're actually trying that shit. Yeah, but right. if you're not an active player, you have to learn and teach these kids when to use this stuff. Mm -hmm. Some moves are baselined, like this move, I got this move, is from uh, the free throw line to the baseline. Program. Then you have in the right. middle of the court moves, right. Right? right? You have ISO moves, you have, you know, all these moves are not used in the same areas, mm -hmm. right? And as a trainer, you need to know that shit too. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That's Some moves are against zones. Some yeah. moves are against man. Because if you're taking from the NBA and you're giving it to high school kids. Yeah, that's ninety percent of the moves that you're teaching the high school kid is not going to work mm -hmm. because there's called there's this thing called the fucking zone, mm -hmm. right? So if he's only learning how to play against a man to man, and there's a zone, mm -hmm. that player is going to have a problem. <laughs> Everybody looks good against a trash can. I'll just <laughs> my ass can go out there right now and cross <laughs> out of a trash can. Trash when I got Got that trash can. <laughs> yeah. Nah, a good example is last week I was with Jalen Brown. You know, we were going over stuff, getting ready for the playoffs. And like you said, like the, the moves that he was doing to try to get a better rhythm is moves that I've never done in my life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I like he said, Jalen would be there. I'll test the move out. Of, respectfully, I was making my shot. So I was like, when, when the ball was going behind my back, this is what I felt. This is what I did with my fingertips and my feet and my brain to make it all connect as one. So, like, that's what Gil used to do. So, like, when Gil's just dribbling, he's not just dribbling. His brain is just sinking to the seams and to the leather. Mm -hmm. And then he knows by the time I drop my right foot, even if I'm this deep, the ball's going to stop exactly where I wanted to stop so I can always shoot how I want to shoot. Mm -hmm. And that's what me and Jalen went over for, like, two hours last week because Jalen's a great scorer. Mm -hmm. But we have to get better at having better balance and feeling better seeing. And that's what he said. Jalen was like, show me. And as trainers, if your client can't, if you can't show your client exactly what they're learning, it's kind of, it's like me. Like I can go online and watch somebody teach how to play the violin. But if somebody say, hey coach, can you play this song? And I don't know how to play it. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I do respect, you know, people, we do give people a hard time. I do respect those people that are out there trying to help people. Yeah, for sure. But like you're saying, I, I think personally we shouldn't charge uh, so much. Of course, if I'm um, uh, helping a team, there's a certain type of protocol that I have to charge. But when it comes to grassroots, I try to keep it in the range of that family. You get what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, I'm not saying, all right, look, bro, th y'all three, seven hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really. But it's a level. It's, it's it's still levels. You know, yeah. there's 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 you guys. That's you know you Olin. You guys are yeah. at a certain. Team here yeah. for the guys who are just starting out like you can't charge yeah certain amount if you're not in that tier if yeah. you don't have clients that you can say this is my client right. this is this is his client like i encourage kids try everyone out yeah the reason you try everyone out is it's like um it's like a buffet Man, right yeah you have to you have to create an appetite of different yeah th of different things so you understand your palate because yeah. you know if i'm learning you know uh shooting techniques from you okay this guy is a dribbling coach mm -hmm. okay this guy is um you know layup guy mm -hmm. For me to be great, I have mm -hmm. to understand all of them, mm -hmm. right? And that's why process the great shit, throw away the bullshit. And that's why that's what a lot of people understand about me. So let's do let's do uh, Bobby Porter's. For Bobby Porter's, my only job is shooting. Mm -hmm. He has a dribbling coach, he has a weight coach, he has a chef. But I'm not going into the workouts trying to do what the dribbling coach do. And that's what I think a lot of <laughs> trainers have to work on. So like, if you're training a guy, do what your gift is that God gave you to help mm -hmm. that guy. Don't try to do stuff, because I wasn't a dribbler. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I always knew how to do, I get to my 
Oh, shot. shot. <laughs> so you, you're never going to stop me from getting to my shot. Pac-10, yeah. A-10, whatever. I'm always going to get to my shot. So that's where I come into play where somebody like Grayson or uh, Michael Porter Jr., they say, well, this guy's jamming me here. I'm not as athletic as you, but this is what I used to do right here. And they're like, God damn, like that shit worked. Yeah, <laughs> this is what you can do in this spot right here and it's going to work. See, the thing that people don't know even about Gil, Gil, get it, him mellow. They can put the ball behind their neck, stick their leg out, put it in your crotch area just so you can take a, a gentle step back and then they're going to yeah. immediately shoot. Yeah. So it's different things that I know how to do to really change the rhythm of something and then get my shot off yeah. that a lot of uh, dribbling coaches and a lot of people don't know. Yeah. And I think if trainers just, if you're good at something, just stick with that. And then once you master that, like he's saying, you can say, oh, I train Antoine. This year, he, his assist turnover ratio was this. And, mm-hmm. his, and then now that's when your resume builds up. And I think that's what helps me is because when I go in to train a guy, if me and Gil are trainers, I let him speak. He does his thing. He lets me speak. It's not about egos. Oh, yeah. shit. He training with Gil. Like he, uh, and, and then me and him doing posts coming at each other. Like, yeah. oh, he should have. No, I don't give a like like if Bobby hits like uh, what, the uh, off season, not the off season, but Bobby and them just had a break, the All Star break. Mm-hmm. I couldn't go because the NBA needed me to be at All Star weekend. Yeah. Bobby's like, yo, I'm gonna go to Miami, train with some. Bro, I don't give a, like you ain't my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Go do your thing, bro. Handle your business, and if there's something that you feel that isn't right, you call me on the phone. We can go over it. But I'm not the type of trainer that if somebody trains with another guy, I, the trainer got to call me. Yeah. Hey man, is it okay? Like, I don't give a. F- I yeah, train that guy. Yeah. Like this ain't my this ain't my wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's how the game is. Like what Gil saying, as trainers, they, like bro, they, they, you could train with anybody you want, but you gotta always stay with the person that's stimulating you mentally, mm-hmm. that's gonna push you to the next level. And you know, n- no disrespect to the trainers that can't, you wanna have somebody that can do what you're teaching. So mm-hmm. like the turnarounds that Bobby does, like last night. Uh, yesterday, me and Sabonis was in the gym for three hours. We were going over everything that the Warriors did a good job of uh, stopping him on the wing. Mm-hmm. So I broke down every single aspect that I saw that the Warriors did a great job of broken on, on the wing because I was reading it from a shooting perspective, not to shoot. So a lot of people with me, they think if I train you and your Sabonis, this guy's going to come out shooting 15 threes a game. Mm -hmm. No, it's for you to start getting a better understanding. And then when I feel comfortable and you feel comfortable, take four threes. Mm -hmm. But but right now you're not capable of certain things. But this is how they stopped you here. This is how they stopped you here. And if you feel comfortable on Monday, you can take that shot. And that's what I break down for clients. And, and you know, and that's why people like Sabonis, he didn't take a lot of them, mm-hmm. but he shot 38% this year. He didn't take a lot of them, but he shot like the highest mid-range jump shot of his career. But it's not about taking a lot. It's about in yeah, the NBA, sure. they're going to do certain things to taunt you. If you're not good at it, cool. But that's why you're supposed to work on it, that if you're in 10 games, you should take a few. And that's why, you know, people like Ben Simmons, people are so hard on him and all due respect to him. I personally don't think he has a bad jump shot. I just think if I was the coach, I would tell him, look, Ben, if you don't take five jump shots a game, I'm not going to play you. If you take five jump shots a game and you airball five jump shots a game and I'm the coach, I'm fucking happy. You keep shooting. If you came down and you're wide open and you felt confident and you shot it and missed, I'm happy. Because what it does is it's going to trigger the other stuff. Now, when he goes to the basket, instead of jumping a little bit off the ground, he might jump over the fucking rim. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, have not having confidence in the left hand pass, because all of that levels in the game matters. Yes, if, if you're insecure in one part of the game, it trickles to the other stuff. That's why your body has to be shredded. Mm-hmm. Every time I start with clients, I don't have abs right now, but like <laughs> if you want to be an elite shooter, you have to have strong thighs. Mm-hmm. You have to have abs. You have to have certain things because the best shooters have endurance mm-hmm. and you can't be a shooter and be fat. So, uh, you know, all due respect to all my clients, but I'm going to use him example. When I first met Bobby Portis, he didn't have abs. He didn't have uh, men to men, when he had his thighs out and I was watching his thighs, I didn't see the muscles flexing when he walked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I said, Bobby. And from a hooping perspective, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I said, <laughs> so I said, Bobby, for this to work, every time you walk, I need to see that bone. You know what I'm talking about, that yeah, muscle. Yeah, yeah, when you take like, off your shirt, I want to see paka, 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 paka. Yeah. And he transformed his body. And that one season, he shot 47% from three. This season, he's he's in talks for six man of the year. But that's what everybody don't understand. Like you're saying, from the back end, People think, you know, when you go in there, you could just shoot him. It's so much that goes into it to get, to take it to the next level. Like this guy, when he was playing, shredded up. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. Like, I heard someone say, man, if everyone, if you gave me 20 shots, yeah. I'll, I'll be just like everyone else. 
No, the f- you wouldn't. <laughs> no, the f- you wouldn't. That's not how it works. Nah, right. Everyone gets 20 shots and everyone can average. That's not nah. how basketball works. That's not how nah. life works. There's right. a reason. Step- <laughs> DeAndre, I mean, uh, Fox, right? Yeah. He just made a comment about Steph. Yeah. Right? He is an extreme athlete. Yeah. When against an extreme conditioned athlete. Yes. Right? To be able to shoot 20 shots a night, you have to be physically yes. capable of doing it. Yes. Right? That is just not, I can wake up out of bed and no, you yeah. have, your body has to be mm-hmm. trained because you're gonna cramp at mm-hmm. night, your body's gonna be sore. Mm-hmm. Like even with my 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 wrist and arm, yeah. if you take a hundred shots a day and then a, a hundred shots mm-hmm. tomorrow, your shit's gonna mm-hmm. be sore to mm-hmm. the point you can't shoot for the next two days. Mm-hmm. Well, so you have to train your muscles to be able to shoot mm-hmm. a thousand shots a day. Mm-hmm. Your muscles have to be trained to actually do that. You have to be conditioned to do that. Mm-hmm. So no, it's not. Yeah, let me just give you 20 shots and every single night and you're going to act. No, you're not. Yeah. That's why you can't do it. <laughs> right. If you could have done it, you would have did it. That's right. not how. Like, so when people talk about this, like, how do you do it? I ran five miles. There's a reason I said I ran five miles a day. Yeah. I have to be conditioned to bring up the ball, mm-hmm. to move, to play defense, mm-hmm. to dribble. I have to be conditioned mm-hmm. yeah, for, sure. for that activity. Mm-hmm. What Steph does that is just not wake up and take. You think he just sits in and takes spot shots all day? Nah. No, that man right. is running up and down, shooting, passing, going. Yeah. How he plays is how he trains. Yeah, absolutely. That's why it's hard to guard him because mm-hmm. you're not you're not training yourself to guard Steph. Mm-hmm. If you did, you would just sit there and just run around in yeah. a circle for just an hour. Yeah. Just run around yeah. like a crazy dog with your yeah. head cut off because yeah. that's the only way you're going to stick this man because you have to be in the same shape he's in. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Which is, which is impossible. Yeah. So you talked about working with Sabonis and the Kings right now in their mm-hmm. playoff series, working with Jalen Brown, working with Bobby Portis, Michael mm-hmm. Porter Jr., amongst others. How does your approach differ with each one of those guys? And how does your approach with Sabonis differ with Jalen Brown? Well, everybody's a different player. So, like, uh, if I train Michael Porter Jr., he, you know, this is not true, but he might have a bad big toe. You know, Sabonis might have a bad thought. Like, it's different things that happen in different people's body. So you have to have a certain type of approach to every single player. Mm-hmm. Some people have a great mental toughness. Some mm-hmm. players don't. Um, some players uh, can concentrate longer than others. So it's my job to identify what they can and what they can't do. And then once I identify what they can't do, I attack it aggressive. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and if, some, if it's somebody that I can ag- uh, attack aggressive, I'll come right in. Like somebody like Sabonis last summer, he was with me all summer, him and his father. Sabonis, I was aggressive because he, he has an aggressive game. So my training could be aggressive. But there's some um, professionals and some grassroots kids, they can't take that type of aggressiveness because sometimes as trainers, we have to know if you push this guy too far, he'll yield back. Mm-hmm. And that's what you don't want. You should push him to a point. OK, he's starting to yield. Let me back up. And then I push him to another point. He's he, you know what? He's grown in the last two months. Let mm-hmm. me attack him now. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. I do well for my clients because I can't I can't train Gil train Steph and then train LeBron and give them all the same workout. And that's why in my trainings in the summer, <laughs> my training in the summer, I don't let NBA players train together unless they're the same position. And le- like a good example is like, I had clients this summer, like uh, if they have the same game, I'll let them train, but it can only be two to a workout. Mm-hmm. I can't have NBA guys where one is left, one is right, one is a big, one is a short, and they're mm-hmm. all in the same workout. Cause mm-hmm. that's, it doesn't work that way. And I do that with the same with grassroots. Like I lose a lot of money. And the reason why I lose a lot of money is I could make a lot of money because my name, mm-hmm. I don't bring a whole pack of kids together and put them through the same workout because they're not all going to mm-hmm. do the same, same shit thing. in the game. And yes, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you can make money doing that. But the thing is, my the way my name is, if I put Billy through a workout through something the same as like little DJ Wagner doing, that's not fair. Mm-hmm. You're not as fast as him. You don't know how to feel the ball. Like it's certain things that certain people should be doing. But I feel like that's what's happening in the game right now. You know, and it, I ain't going to knock the hustle like like you saying, like get your bread. But me, if you notice in all my workouts, if I post workouts, it's fake, by the way. All the stuff I post on the gram is after my workout and then I'll just post something just to put up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sure. if you notice in all those videos, there's never multiple people in the gym. I don't yeah. do that. And in my workouts, I don't have uh, videographers. I don't have uh, cameramen. If the guy comes with somebody, cool, do that. I'm not a fan of that because <laughs> if, if me and you boogieing, no disrespect to my clients that do bring the cameraman and video guys. Mm-hmm. But if me and you boogieing, I don't feel comfortable with somebody videotaping and taking pictures because 
Like me focusing on that. Yeah. I think we should be boogieing. Now afterwards, when the whole workout is over, all right, cool. What type of content you need? Let's let's do a fake workout yeah, yeah. to get that. So in my in my workouts, I don't have you've noticed I don't I don't film and stuff. I'm real big on because to really tap into somebody's mental, you know, no disrespect to people with kids. I don't even want your kids in there. Mm-hmm. Like I really it has to be me and you. It has to be mono e mono for you to really understand what it takes to to take your game to the next level with the art of shooting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's a very thing that, that that's in, oh, what you said is very important. So so people can hear it. He has his workout first. Yeah, he works out first. He Man. works the clients out first. Yeah. After the workout is over with the content you see on Instagram. Yeah, that's what he shoots for. Yeah. So they already done the two to three hour workout. Yeah. Then spend five minutes on content. Yeah. I've noticed that because you're already sweating. Yeah. yeah I've <laughs> noticed it. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed it because yeah. you're already sweating. So yeah. understand that when you're talking about creating content, yeah. right? Get the fucking shit done first. Yeah. Right? You work out, get yeah. all that, and then you spend the five, 10 minutes <laughs> to get what you're trying to do for Instagram yeah. Yeah, versus just posting someone's whole three hours, nah, then trying right. to create content out of that because nah. you're right. They'll do it for the gram. Yeah. And, 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 and it, yeah, exactly. He's right. And, and that's what I'm big on. And that's what people don't understand about my train. Like he said, you know, let's do a pro, let's do Sabonis. You know what I mean? So like, um, I posted something with Sabonis like two weeks ago when I was up in his shit and he was up and he's doing his thing. But what people don't know is that workout, that one move, like he's saying, he, that wasn't even a move we worked on, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going really- why would, you, why would you put that out there? That's what I'm saying. I don't really put, I don't really put out what I really do. And uh, that's what I think my client, that's why my clients, like the other day I posted something that Bobby Portis was doing. You know what I mean? It was just, it's just fluff. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's fluff for, for, for Instagram. We appreciate you sharing that. But yeah, you yeah. should have been like, nah, this is all the real <laughs> shit. So no, 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 it's real. You, no, no, I ain't gonna let you throw up no bullshit. It's like, they're doing it, but it's not the real workout. You go, you get yeah, where I'm coming from. Yeah. Just for his ops out there to think like, oh, that's what he really is. Yeah, no, but no, but for, really for but no, no, but for other clients, yeah. they need to know I'm professional. Yeah, yeah for sure. Right. So yeah. you see us filming, that's not nah. our workout. Nah. Right. This right. is just, you know, just the social part. If you right. want to come in here and get your Some guys in. want that. Like he said, yeah. some guys, you know, in the summer, it's not about this, but you notice you gotta do it now. You Your fans want to wanna see. Mm-hmm. So they might say, hey, bro, you know, we've been training for like two months. You you only been posting Insta stories. Can you do a post? Hell yeah, I do a post. Mm-hmm. But me personally, how my brand is now is very sensitive. So let's say Gil. Gil ain't shot the ball in, in four years and then he trains with Lethal Shooter. The world thinks soon as I touch Gil, he turns into f- Steph Curry. <laughs> but it don't work like that with the art of shooting. It's, it's so much repetition that goes into this that, that fans just don't understand. It's like, he can't shoot because of you, Lethal. Yeah. No, that n- can't shoot because of himself. <laughs> yeah. If he wants, and, and, and I was on Bobby's I was on Bobby's podcast three weeks ago mm-hmm. and Bobby said that to his followers. He said, "You, the followers, if you really understood how good Lethal's coaching is, if me, the client, if I don't do the drills that Lethal gives me, I'm going to miss. And Bobby admitted that when he does the drills, mm-hmm. he sh- he's like you, he can shoot the pill because mm-hmm. must, bro, you can't go as a shooter, right? This is what I learned. And I, it took me a long time to really buy into this with my dad, but like, I can't say I'm going to shoot Monday, Wednesday, Friday and have a game Sunday. You got to shoot every day, but you can't do high volume because you'll mess up your rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. But you have to get your brain understanding the same repetition over and over. And no disrespect, you can't, as soon as you finish shooting, go right to your phone or go right to video games. You got to give your brain time to process and get this other stuff. It's just like anything when you're mm-hmm. studying for the SAT or ACT and stuff like that. You can't you can't read a book and then right after you're done, it's like, oh, oh. now your brain forgot all the information. So with my clients, he was explaining to people because we never put this out. Because what I don't do, if somebody, all right, a good example. Grayson Island one time shot bad. Mm-hmm. Lethal, you're some shit. Mm-hmm. You can't train. The next game, he broke the NBA record. He scored like 24 points in a quarter. Yeah. And he went seven for seven or something wild yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Lethal, we love you. Yeah. But the thing I don't do, if you've noticed, I've never took up for myself on social media where it's like Gil shooting like that because of Gil. Mm-hmm. Or a good example, one of my clients this year, he's going through like some family stuff. But he's not doing all the fans like, Lethal, it's your fault. But people don't know these are humans. Yeah. His, his homie might have just got shot yesterday. Mm-hmm. You don't know this why he's out there playing bad. But that's what the thing about yeah. my brand. And I love that I have a brand this big because God gave me this brand because all due respect to everybody, I don't give a 
what people say about me. I don't care what other people think about me because I know what my services do and I know my abilities. The thing is, when you have respectfully sensitive people that are in a game that he's saying, people are jumping into a game. Mm. Oh shit, Lethal got two million. Mm. I see you doing this. But you jump into a game like he's saying, if you're not doing the right way, you're just going to hurt people games mm -hmm. and then you're going to become sensitive because you're going to be arguing with other trainers online and then you're going to be taking up for yourself online, which is something I don't do. Like, if somebody play, they play that game, it happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's crazy because that that is how it, it works, yeah. right? We you, you have your clients yeah. and we watch them, they bag yeah. in. Is this fault? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm on social all day. Yeah. No, I've seen it. Oh, yeah. bro, they're slaughtering me. I can bro. think about like Coos back in the day. When in the, the, but this is Laker fans you, in general. But you know what's funny about Lakers fans? All due respect to them. The year I had Coos, KCP, Avery Bradley, I was training Quinn. I was training like six players, right? They play a good game, Lakers fans, they're killing me. Mm -hmm. They play a good game, they're killing me. That year with, with KCP, he was two threes away from breaking Kobe's record. It was the, like the highest three-point percentage of, in KCP's uh, career mm -hmm. for Lakers fans. But the thing is, people want instant gratification. Yeah. It's a process. Well, that's bro. Lakers fans in general. Yeah, it's, but it's a process. But it is a, it, they, don't, they don't understand the concept of uh, 24 hours yes. in a day, right? But I trained you for, you know, two hours, yeah. right? There's 22 more hours. Yeah. He's by himself. Yeah. He's by himself. Himself, yeah. right? I, yeah. like I train two times a week or yeah. once a week. He's on the road. Yeah. The shit he does on the road has yeah. nothing to do with me. Yeah. Talk to the Laker trainers. Yeah. Right? And, and, and people don't understand that, right? Yeah. And and um, they don't want to understand. We that, don't. Though. We didn't have guys like you when nah. I played. Yeah. Right. This yeah. was all self everything. Right. Like our our uh, player development coach was just an old old ex-player that was still trying to be part of the coaching staff or and try to hang out with the guys yeah. when they want to go to club or get some, yeah. some go to strip club, yeah. right? You know, yeah. he was like the, the the snitch who was partying yeah. that night. That was yeah. his job, right? It wasn't yeah. actually training yeah. the players. Yeah. So what I did was, you know, Drew, uh, Drew Cleary, our strip our strength coach, our strength coach yeah. was the, the guy who rebound or uh, Tim Conley and the mm -hmm. brothers. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is like during a game, if I see someone do something, right? Mm -hmm. Jamal Crawford does some more. I point to him, get the time clock. I need that. Right, I need that yeah. in my game. Time it, time it. And that's all when I you did. you were doing this during games? During yeah. games, if someone did a move and I was like, what the f*** was that? Man. Hey, time, time that, right? <laughs> yeah. All moves. Yeah. I don't care who you were. Yeah. I'm, Rondo's at Kentucky, yes. and he had that move where he's doing this. Oh man, time that! Yeah. I, I need to learn. So what I'm doing is, I had this. I was famous for this book. Yeah, right. I have a whole sheet of everybody's moves, mm -hmm. and then I'll take it in the summer and I'll just break it down. Mm -hmm. I'll film myself to see if it looks exactly mm -hmm. how it looked on there mm -hmm. because. I don't have someone correcting me. Yeah. So the only thing that corrects me is the film. Yeah. So if I'm filming someone, if I'm filming someone, it's so we can all watch it back mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Right? We can watch it back to see hey, what I was saying is look how your foot positioned, this and that. Mm -hmm. This if you have a good defender, he's not gonna let you put mm -hmm. your foot back like that. Right? So that's how, you know, I'll train my son and my daughter mm -hmm. on if. We train for the most aggressive defenders. Exactly. And that's the most aggressive defenders. Right. You, you, you going against this little guy, that is that not nothing. your defense. Nah. This, if this girl is going to be guarding you. This guy is going to be guarding mm. This type of body size will be mm. trying to guard you. Hey, your teammate, a very great defensive player. Mm -hmm. That's a best friend him. Make best him friend him you. because what happens is if he is great at that, that like he's you know guarding this person, this person, if you guys work together, what, what is happening is you're very skilled offensively. Mm -hmm. You help him defensively. He helps you offensively. Mm -hmm. You win. You win. Both mm -hmm. of you guys are sharpening each other's mm -hmm. tools. And that's how I look at it. I look at the best. If I'm an offensive guy, I look at the best defensive yeah. player and say, he can give me problems. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to f*** him. Mm -hmm. right? and that's, I'm sorry to cut him off, but like that's what I do in the, in the, in the summer. So like with, with Grayson or different guards, like Cole Anthony this summer, mm -hmm. we'll have two interns check him. You know what I mean? So like, but really close, not like uh, one here and one there. So like, as mm -hmm. soon as he makes that second move in a real game, the, the guy isn't that close. Mm -hmm. But you have to use your quick twitch, mm -hmm. but be under control. Because with the art of shooting, you can't be erratic and come out the shit. Mm -hmm. The thing that he was real good at is he could ah, and then be like mm -hmm. poetry in motion. So that's what I do with my guard clients. Like, as soon as he leave that uh, intern, the next intern, then he got to make a decision and then he's poised. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And like, what he's saying is, is very important. So 
That's good. Gil, I just signed up for Rocket Money and I'm already saving some big money after discovering several paid subscriptions I completely forgot about. I couldn't believe when I heard the average American spends nearly $200 a month on subscriptions. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills all in one place. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash no chill. That's rocketmoney.com slash no chill. Cha-ching! So girl, I gotta know, did you ever do a move, watch it on video, be like, I can't do this shit? <laughs> no, 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 all the time. Okay. All, all, watch no, the all video the time. Back, like, oh, no, all, I, all I, I didn't know how to do, I was not, because I had hurt my knee, yeah. Yeah. the the, uh, the Euro, oh, yeah. I was yeah. having trouble with that yeah. move. Yeah. Was just like coming down and, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. like, I, naturally I could do it, but when I was training on how to do it, yeah. it, the process didn't really, I couldn't really, I even have trouble with the, when I was training for the big three, right? I was used to, like, when I come off the pick and roll, two steps, lift. Mm. The new little game, right foot, that, oh, man. I mean, that, yeah. when I'm talking about, I'm wasting hours yeah. trying to figure out how to, to, because it's not, it's not made for athleticism. What I mean is, it's little guard play. Yeah, you ain't gonna right? see no. It's a little guard when you're coming down. I got it on my hip yeah, and I'm sitting yeah, there doing this yeah. versus someone like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant nah, ain't coming down. Nah. He's gonna <laughs> Greek the freak is not coming down and sitting here doing this because he's already jumped from the free throw yeah, line, yeah. right? So that's how you know I was training. I come and then hurry up and take off, mm -hmm. right? Here is boom, 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 then jump. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how to like I have to I have to. Speed up or slow down. Mm -hmm. It was just it was just this weird thing, and it gave me problems yeah. trying to figure <laughs> out how to because when you're when you're long, you're trying to use strides yeah. versus little little mm, little hold easy. them off, boom. Yeah, and it, that that gave me problems. Yeah, like, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, seriously, like workouts like that is for like you know like Cole Anthony and different small, but people like Michael Porter is like six eight. It's it's hard for him. Not saying they can't. Mm -hmm. Don't get it messed up. But it's like. That's not really what they're working on. You know what I mean? It's just different. Yeah, like if, different. if I, I'm at the free throw line, I get past the. Uh, if I'm, you know, you get past that pick and roll, mm -hmm. right? And you have this this free space. You're jumping. You're right. elongating. Right. Right. Versus all right, all right, all, all that right. Dip, yeah. You ain't got to do <laughs> that. Like that. Yeah. So you talk about you from the DMV, DC yep. area, yep. and also I just want to correct you, real. It's not the Euro step. Elgin Baylor was getting it off. If not at the same exact time, it is not called the Elgin Bear. Okay, let's throw it on Instagram and say, "Elgin Bear step." And see what we happens. We are trying to shift the narrative. Let's see what we, happens. We let's can use this show. <laughs> let's we see what happens. We can't let the Euro take Elgin's move and act like it was their shit first. Elgin from from the DMV area yeah, as well. Elgin he was that, getting. I'm not even talking to my dad. He, they were getting that shit off around no, the same time, but they were. So we don't know. You know, all the Euro defenders are saying, "Oh, they were doing it in the '50s." Elgin was doing it in the '50s too. So. Mm -hmm. There's no documented evidence that it came from the Euro. So I feel like it's a other situation. But, but that's just like anything. When D Wade did the that move, right? The behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got hit with that move, shit, 2001, 2002, mm. by uh, Alvin Williams. Put me up with those moves. Damn. Didn't you know he was one of those guys that that that, that, yeah. that irked and jerk and yeah, you I know hate that. he's coming and uh, yeah. stop boom and oh, oh, <laughs> oh what the yeah. right so so I got hit with the move before Dwayne Wade yeah. Dwayne Wade did in the playoffs against Baron Davis yeah Whoa. yeah and then from there that became the D Wade move yeah my respect that's D Wade respect okay it. I know but what I'm saying is in the community but you know it's, it's sometimes you know sometimes we do moves naturally right we yeah. do moves naturally and then someone sees it. And then they 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 perfect it, and yeah. then it becomes their move. Yeah. For sure, I'm gonna say Elgin Baylor had that shit perfected. If you go back and watch highlights from the, yeah. there's the no 50s. listen, listen. We have tape. Yeah. No, no, no one cares about the fifties. <laughs> We're trying to bring. <laughs> what I'm talking about is listen. I, no I went, 50 slam. I went to school in two, you know, ninety nine, <laughs> two thousand one. Like the internet didn't really get popping until like two thousand five or four. Yeah. Right. So like like 
Vince Carter was touching the top of the backboard. We we don't get to see that that yeah. footage, no, right? So sure. yeah. trust me, no one cares about the fifties. We don't we can't we can't confirm. <laughs> that. Okay, we care about Elgin Baylor. And no, we, no, no, no. I'm saying, but we can't confirm that he was doing a year roll. It might just been just two good steps. Just uh uh. He was here with the bear in the bear. I know. I've seen I've seen footage. So I'm just trying to give Elgin his due. Legend. I can't. I gotta stop messing with the older generation. It's just fun. This is fucking fun, y'all. It's just oh, fun. Thank me, a lot of dudes from the 50s aren't around now, so they won't hear this. Yeah, at the end of the day, look, in 2000, 2020, Oh, they're going to be, they're they're gonna be the killing the for sure. <laughs> them, two, them early 2000s, trash. Hibachi, <laughs> what? What was the Hibachi in? Uh, so you, you from, obviously, D.C., DMV area. Play with a bunch of guys that you, yeah. you've listed, but who's a guy that you play with or played against that you feel like doesn't get the love they deserve? From the DMV? Yeah. I would say Quinn Cook. Okay. You know, Quinn Cook doesn't really get the the because like Quinn is the only one from my area that you know he won middle school, high school, college, um, Olympic team. Not mm-hmm. the Olympic, but I'm some of the junior Olympic team. Junior. He won uh, multiple um, NBA titles. Of course, he's not the guy that's scoring all the points, but he show. I feel like he's showing the DMV what a winner is. Of course, I feel the greatest player to ever come out of the DMV is Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like another person that's one of the, but he didn't get to play was Lynn Bias. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you said, players like Elgin Baylor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We have great players, but I feel like as far as awards and stuff like that, Quinn has been, he's swept, and I feel like he doesn't get enough recognition for what he's done for the DMV area. For sure. Yeah. Mine was... Um um, cause I've watched him coming up. Yeah. The same Michael Beasley. Yeah. And I was going to say him too, because what people don't know the year that me and Kevin was uh, at national Christian, Mike Beasley played at national Christian. He played on the JV team and he wow. was going to play up. So when Mike Beasley, me and Kevin Durant were at the same high school, uh, we were going to move uh, Mike up for, you know, certain games, if that <laughs> makes sense. But he happened, you know, he got happened to get kicked out, but what Mike was doing to us back then, um, it was, I mean, respectful to Kevin, you know what I'm saying? Bro, this shit was like unreal, you know what I mean? Because me and, what well, people don't know is me, uh, I have, so put your hands up to mine mm-hmm. too. So like people don't know, like yeah. me and Mike have big ass hands, yeah. but Mike knew how back then to like put it away from people to dunk on you and mm-hmm. do, so that's how he used to kill everybody. Like, yeah. And all due respect to everybody, yeah, yeah, he used to yeah, kill sure. everybody. That's not disrespect to KD, but, who, for people who saw Beasley yeah, play, you know what I mean? But like, I think what has happened, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, cause you know, we're in a, not saying you're not, we're in the same game, but like, the NBA doesn't do a good justice to players like that to help them understand certain systems and to put the right barriers around certain people so they can understand what's going on, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so when NBA was, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. <laughs> you started you know, the 50s. <laughs> the NBA, right? Right. If you look at the age group, 20, 20, yeah. 22, Right, everybody is old men, right? They they've went to college, they've understood young adulthood. Yeah. Right. Um, well, what happens the two thousands, like ninety the the nineties mm-hmm. is still twinkling. You have a few mm-hmm. young kids coming in, mm-hmm. right? So most of the teams is veterans. Mm-hmm. Well, the middle of the two thousands, it's kids. Yeah. Right. So the age now. On a veteran, Mm -hmm. back then, 28, 29. Mm -hmm. Now, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you have the Beasleys coming in and you have this young kid that's 19 years old and then you put him in Miami? Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? You put Miami out of Mm -hmm. all places? Mm -hmm. Like, you have a guy who has a city that actually does not sleep, Mm -mm. right? He he can wake up at 6 a.m., and he can go to the club because yeah. there's a club that's starting at 6 a.m., <laughs> right? You got in FedEx packages yeah. going to the club like, hey, <laughs> right before they go to their ship. You got strip clubs that's opening up at that time. Yeah. You have a 19-year-old famous kid with d- money. Yeah. Disposable income. Right? Yeah. So so he has more distractions. You got pra- practice for two hours. Then you have, you have 22 hours to try not to get in trouble. Yeah. And that was the, that was the problem. Yeah. Right? Like... We're, you're expecting players to be disciplined mm-hmm. because they have money. That's no, not that's fair. not how the f- mm-hmm. shit works. Because the the guys who are the, the people who are judging, mm-hmm. you got rich at thirty. Yeah, 30, 35, 40 mm-hmm. years old. Right, that's when you made your 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 shit. 
Well, the athlete is making errors at twenty at the wrong yeah. age. Yeah, right. They're yeah. making it at the wrong age when they're still immature. They don't know what to do. They don't have no. They have no boundaries. Nah. They have no structure. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, no support system too. I'll say, yeah, yeah. yeah. for the most part, well, D- no, no discipline. Most part, but no discipline either. Growing up in certain areas too, it's a different type of people that you have around you mm-hmm. because we don't know if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you know, like he's saying, like Mike. Bro, it's nothing Michael Beasley can't do. He can shoot the three, he can shoot the mid range. He could, but like you said, you got to put the right structure around him so he can succeed. And I would love, like he's saying, if the NBA, the NFL, uh, uh, in different sports, that's giving somebody such lump lump sum so fast that they put the infrastructure around certain players so they can succeed. Because mm-hmm. me personally, like he's saying about Mike. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to say you don't know, but I saw it when since it came, the, the ninth grade, yeah, the eighth came, grade. When like, it came to the he, game. Bro, like he was a freak. Yeah, he still is a freak. What's so funny? They said, they, they said there's a stat, was it uh, him and LeBron played one-on-one about yeah. 30-something games yeah. and he's he, he hasn't lost? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> right, but that makes sense because he's a, he, he was the one-on-one demon. They're the same size, yeah. right? He's long. Yeah. Uh, um, um, he can score yeah. all different levels. Um, it's just that sometimes when you when you get caught early into a lifestyle, it's, it's really hard to yeah. battle out You're of it. Not wrong. Um, and it's just one of, if you don't have veterans that 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 really are holding you accountable and care for you and care for so you. So it's a lot of like I feel like vets uh, should do a better job. Like let's say he is a rookie, bruh. Come on with me. This is what the mistakes I made. This is what I did with my money. This is what I did with this. I remember when I flew to Indiana, I messed with uh, Becky the Stallion. She set me up. Mm-hmm. This is what I did wrong with this. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I could be wrong, but I feel like we don't have that anymore. And I feel like if we did that, players wouldn't be getting caught up with, you know, uh, I want to say porn stars and getting caught up in all these type of situations. <laughs> no, I'm just being honest no, because wrong. if I'm on the team, bro, and you my man and you're in a situation and, and I'm a vet, I don't, I don't care if I got a family. I'm pulling you to, you coming with me. You're going to live in my house for mm-hmm. a few weeks. Mm-hmm. You don't got to worry about me. I know you got money, but mm-hmm. you don't got to worry because I, I see your future and I want to help you. But do you feel like some of those vets are kind of salty and they're looking at somebody like you coming in like, oh, this motherfucker trying to take my job, so I'm not going to help you. I'm going to do everything. We're still competitive but, yeah. now. But no, no, no. You still, you still have that. You still have the competitive part. It's, it's a, it has to be vets that is secure with themselves. Exactly. Right? So if, you can't, if yeah. you can't bring the, the veteran that's on the team, then you should be bringing your veterans back. Yeah. Right? If, I'm, if I have a young superstar yeah. and I have Philadelphia as my team that I'm I, I run. Right. Allen Iverson is coming back to mentor. Yes. Because he is Philly. Yes. He was the superstar. And he and he had the club. He has the all to say. He can tell you the pitfalls <laughs> right. of what made him go from here down. Right. He can give you that mm-hmm. information. That's what he's paid to do. Mm-hmm. I'm paying him to give you the information. Yep. When you want to go out and party, call Allen. Right. Call Allen. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 no. You're not doing though. this. You're like, not doing this shit today. For but, real. But some the what happens in just our society is when someone falls, right? We tell them, be accountable for the shit you did. Right. Right? We right. tell them, we, we berate them, be f- accountable. Right. Okay, when this person becomes accountable and he starts climbing up and he becomes what you told him to be, you don't want to accept that shit. Mm-mm. That all, oh, now, mm-hmm. you remember when you did this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah. Now you told me to be accountable. I became accountable. Now mm-hmm. what? Mm-hmm. Well, they want to hold you back down. Mm-hmm. Because he became accountable, he knows what he done. He knows who he is now. Right. Now let's put him in this situation so he can teach the other kids not to fall. I yeah. think that's really good. Well, girl, I think, yeah. you know, I look at somebody like yourself who has been accountable and now can give back to that younger generation. Mm-hmm. If I'm a Hooper that's coming up, I'm going to be more inclined to listen to you than some random dude. Because mm-hmm. like, yo, Gildan Gil had it all, had it all, had it taken away. Mm-hmm. And then and got, got it back. And that's the, that's the American, <laughs> but that's the American way. And I think sometimes in society, we're, we're so busy on trying to make someone pay, then keep making them pay for the same mistake. Mm -hmm. Like that's not how it's Mm -hmm. supposed to be. Like you guys want second chances, right? Mm -hmm. And when someone gets a second chance, why are you still trying to hold them to who they were? When you told them, be a better, be like, no one knows what accountability is because no one accepts it. What's wrong with cancer culture is you guys, Mm -hmm. it's you. Because the person has actually bettered himself. Mm -hmm. He's never like, I tell people this, 
The reason I never say, uh, the reason I tell people not to say sorry, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, there's a process to that. The process is understanding what you did wrong, mm -hmm. which is gonna take weeks, months, years. Change your behavior, right? You have to change the behavior mm -hmm. that puts you down there. Once you change that behavior, you have shown that you are a different person. Right. Then you apologize. Right. See, if you apologize before changing the behavior, then you're not doing shit, yeah. right? right? Th that is nothing. So you have to change the behavior first. Once you change it, you've shown you have not done this again. And that's it. Because I did that with the Lupita thing, right? Right. I did it with the Lupita thing. Me, it was asshole mode. Mm -hmm. Right? I woke up, I don't know what I seen. I thought I said I thought I seen something that says, if you're mixed, you're not beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's not what it said. It said you don't have to be mixed to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, right? So my brain processed that that shit wrong. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I I spurred it out. Like this bullshit, y'all, you're talking about if you're dark black and you're mixed, I'm thinking about my daughter, my kids are mixed. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how we playing games today? Mm -hmm. All right, beef time, right? By the time I realized that, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the same thing, we're on the same side. Yeah. Right. I already ran down the rabbit hole. Right. I'm like, Right. Double down. <laughs> Shit. Let's just double down. So I doubled down just like I had already lost right. this battle. Right. Let's just keep it, just keep the shit going. Right. And I said I'm not apologizing. So it took me three years right. to understand. I need to show the people I've changed. Right. I I never attacked another, you know, black woman, never female again. Right. Had to understand the process. When everything was, no one was paying attention to me, that's when I apologize. Exactly. I'm not apologizing because you want me to. Because right. technically, I haven't learned my lesson yet. Right. But that's the problem, I think, in this society. is, is more performative. We want you to apologize right away. And then when you apologize, oh, we don't, don't believe you, right? yeah, don't <laughs> you <laughs> anyway. That wasn't good enough. That wasn't a good enough right, apology. Right, right, right. That's what you want me to do. Right, right. Yeah, but that's, that's the thing. So I, 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 tell, I tell people, when, you, when you're really trying to apologize, don't apologize because they caught you. They, they caught you. Mm -hmm. They don't matter. Change it. If you really are sorry, you know, figure out why you did it. What was the the, 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 the meaning b b behind it? Then change the behavior. Right. Show that you've changed the behavior. No matter what they're saying, change your behavior right. because you're trying to be a better person. And then make your apology. So back to your, your college career, and I think this can help a lot of people as we talk about, mm -hmm. you know, guys who are navigating going from high school to the pros, going from mm -hmm. high school to college. You talk about uh, when you're at Washington State and when you're mm -hmm. at St. Bonnie's that mm -hmm. you were complacent a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And I find kind of the same thing. It's tough to be a, a kid, you know, 18 year old kid, go to mm -hmm. and watch. And I can only mm -hmm. imagine that shit. Mm -hmm. Like we, we used to play there on winter breaks and that, mm -hmm. you know, we stay in <laughs> Moscow, Idaho. Mm -hmm. the, the janky was like the best West, whatever that janky <laughs> was with the brick walls or whatever. But, you know, dealing with that, but also now you're on your own for the first time. Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Especially like I, got, I was blessed. I'm from LA, got to stay at UCLA. Mom mm -hmm. and dad were couple miles away and yeah. come kick my ass whenever yeah. I was, wasn't yeah. acting right. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine now I go cross country. I don't really have that necessary support system. So I guess for me, what advice would you give kids that are transitioning from high school to college just about how to approach, you know, especially guys that want to go pro and want to make money playing basketball, how to approach that adult and how to approach that life on campus? I'll just say be consistent. You know, in high school, I was super consistent. That's why I was always ranked like top three in the area. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when I got to college, it was more like, shit, I'm the man, if that makes sense. Yeah, and going sure. and going into the Pac-10, you can't have that mindset back then. Mm -hmm. And I say the Pac-10 week now, but back then the Pac-10 was, we going against Leon Poe, we going yeah. against, when well, they had Arizona, they had uh, Budinger, they had uh, Hassan nice. Adams. So I didn't really um, have the mindset I had in high school. So I, I started taking things for granted because stuff was it's pretty easy. You know, I grew up real messed up, lights off, everything messed up. Then when you get to college, it's like, shoot, I'm the man. Like, yeah. we, we driving Hummers, we getting money from the boosters. Like, we allegedly, living Allegedly, allegedly, not to confirm. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> we, like, all got, saying, we got there. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. We know you UCLA didn't get nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be real. I came in thinking, like, oh, we're about to get bagged. Yeah. Like, we'd be lucky to get a 50 or 100. Yeah, hey, I was on the spotlight. Kareem, my dude, Jabbar, that up. <laughs> hey, Booster, Booster, you're looking like, ah! And what I'm saying is, uh, I remember when Kareem told uh, oh, the uh, Jello Ball that he fucked up the brand of oh, UCLA. Damn. And I'm like, oh, no, it was you. <laughs> like, but, uh, don't do that. It was you. Damn, you. Kareem? What did Kareem do? He threw the shot at the young fella because he got in trouble overseas and then had like a Lamborghini, oh, yeah, yeah. right? And I'm like, well, hold on.
hold on. Do you not forget who you was? <laughs> it, it says it. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with this eight, this booster. That booster became your agent. He agent got you traded to here. <laughs> this is his name. We're not the, you was getting paid. We're not gonna we're not gonna say no name, but there was definitely my pops got caught into it. Yeah. Oh. But that's what there I'm saying. There was definitely a funnel going on, but ahead of the time. But, but hey, that's, hey but, now it's NIL. So but I know, know but, I'm say, but we that's what I'm saying. We were just on that NIL back in the yeah, 60s. Yeah, but, yeah, so we know, but we know why UCLA don't get paid no more. We were innovative. <laughs> Y'all got caught. We were innovative. <laughs> <laughs> navigating within the framework of the rules but yeah so, yeah just so just if you touch on that a little bit more but yeah just, just like a place to see just, a, just don't be complacent that's mm -hmm. what i did i got there coach tony um i was the highest recruit for shooters to come to washington state in a long time they they um had me talk to cleza you remember him from washington state yeah. cleza the shooter mm -hmm. he was the one that talked me into coming there and uh had you taken a trip there before i didn't so i took yeah. i took my trips to like syracuse joy i had I remember, humbly you know yeah. i had a, a, like almost every pac 10 school um because what happened was i didn't have really any schools at all for real mm -hmm. playing for dc assault but my last year when i went to super 664 i like just went crazy. You know, I was on the, uh, all, like the team, like Rondo, we made all star together. We, we went nuts. Mm -hmm. So long story short, that's when I got every school. And then when I got to college, I'm like, shit, I'm eating for free every day. I got a nice place. Like mm -hmm. I, I was just, I wouldn't get enough of the yeah. shots I was supposed to Gil. So mm -hmm. when games happen, coach Tony will play like Oregon. He'll start me. I'm like, God damn, I got to start against Aaron Brooks, mm -hmm. but against Oregon state, I won't play. I'm like, no, oh, he playing games, uh -huh. but I'm playing these psychological games because I knew I wasn't even putting in the work that I was putting in before. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, Dad, man, like, why he ain't playing? Yeah, he ain't playing, man, because I ain't he because of him. But it was actually mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So whatever you did to get there, don't lose that fire. Yeah. And that's what happened my second year at Washington State. I was like, you know what? I'm a lock in. He started playing me a little bit more, but I couldn't. I wasn't playing a lot over Derek Lowe. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that people have to understand as well. I think I might have messed up my curve because you have to sometimes play behind people. And that's what Coach Tony was saying he was like don't leave because soon as Derek leave you, you. you're seeing we're gonna give you the whole team we're gonna give you and Mac the whole team and back then in the Pac-10 if you average what 10 points 10 12 10 to 12 he said he said you average 10 to 12 points you're gonna go first round and when the stuff that I was doing in practice I was like man I'm supposed to be doing it because in practice I was Aaron Afalo mm -hmm. I was Aaron Brooks so like I was on the uh, practice I was killing uh -huh. and then I went to A-10 same thing happened I went there I'm this big guy that came from the Pac-10 I wasn't really putting in the work I was supposed to into my senior year. My senior year is when I broke all the arena records in the A-10. Um, I broke Illinois State three-point record in their arena. Um, I was like the, I, I still have like an A-10 records, like back to back to back games where I had like six threes, which was a blessing because it was just showing me like, this is what got me here. Yeah. So I would say, just don't be complacent. Like whatever you did to get there, just stay consistent. And that's why with my clients, I can watch their games and see if they're putting in the work because I was that player mm -hmm. that I was so good at something that I would take breaks and I could tell if they were, if they're still putting in the work and I'd be like, you really worked up, man. I, I didn't form shoe coach. Yeah, it was noticeable. And you went, you went one for six from three. And, yeah. and people don't understand that too. It's like sometimes you have to really process what's going on in real time around you. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you, you know, your greatness hurts you. Yeah. Because you think that, you know, I, I've been doing it for so long yeah. or I'm good at this and you realize you get to a new place, you achieved where you want to go. Yeah. You don't you don't look at the next stop. No. And I I was blessed to talk to um Chris Mullen. Okay. And he was like, What was your what, what was your dream? And I was like, um, well, to make it to the NBA. Yeah. He was like, Congratulations, you're here. Now what is your next dream? Mm. Oh. Yeah. He's like, because if you don't have another dream after you made it, then how can you get better? Mm. How can you strive for something? How can you go to reach something if this was it? You're here. Mm -hmm. He said, that's why people fail because they have a goal. They get to that goal and they think, okay, I made it. I'm here. And then that's how their game plays. So right. when you get to that goal, do you want to be MVP? Do you want to be this? And then, you know, I say, okay, give me, give me a date. Let me figure this shit yeah, out. Cause yeah. I didn't, this is a question I wasn't ready for. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about it because I'm not playing. I'm sitting yeah. on the bench, you know, giggling and laughing <laughs> because I made it to the NBA. Right. So that's how I'm acting. Right. And then when he's, when he asked me, what do I want? Then after I told him, he said, um, now do you think smiling and coming to practice, being joyful is going to mm. get you there? I was like, nah. Right. The very next day, all, all anger. Right. 
Don't know why. It's just all anger. Now, if you look at my following year, mm-hmm. I damn near, I was behind Rasheed Wallace and technicals. Mm. Because the, the the anger of trying to get to where I need yeah. to get to now is just like when my high school coach, the first one I had, mm-hmm. said I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anything. Mm. So now that anger went back. Like, oh shit, you it's like, all right. And yeah. then then that you propelled that, that, that propelled me. Yeah, that's good. I like that edge. And I and I give that, I tell that to my clients because it's like, let's say, you know what you know what I really don't f with though? And I, I and I explain to my clients too, all respect to NBA players. I don't respect when it's like I'm about to go head to head with you and I'm looking to kill you. And like during the game, me and you are looking at each other. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hate that. Bruh, what the, like you trying to go at this guy. After the game, cool. What's up, Gil? Woo, mm-hmm. woo. But like during the game, it, it's always confusing to me when it's like you're, you're smiling at another player on another team. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I don't get it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like sure. you rip this guy's head off. And then afterwards, let's have a beer or something. Mm-hmm. But during the game, I'll knock your teeth out. Mm-hmm. And that's why I've explained to my clients. So a good example is like <clears throat> Bobby Portis. Like Bobby Portis has the rage that you're talking about. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you don't control it, now the other team can manipulate how you play. Mm-hmm. So if you watch Bobby Portis now, he's not getting the text like how he used to because now he still has the rage. Mm-hmm. But when another team tries to fuck with him to make him get a quick tech, Nah, I see what you're doing. I'm going to head over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I see what you're doing. But just know, I will f*** you up. You right. get what I'm saying? But but that edge he's saying, if you don't have that edge, you won't be successful in life. Like people don't understand yeah. this is all a game, right? Yeah. It's a game within the game, right? So, like, you know, just some of your high school kids out there that's that's watching. Yeah. Um, as a coach, yeah. I will f*** I will f- you up in the game. Right, right. And here's why. Like, I'm the best player. If I know the best player got a little attitude, right? right? Oh, got that, a- that little cocky attitude. Yeah, yeah. Right? That, that, all right. Yeah. Come in the game. Punch on him a little bit. Exactly. Play dirty on him. Play dirty. Get him kicked let out him the game. Kick, let him yeah. get kicked out. <laughs> exactly. You did your job. Thank you. Yes. N- now we have right, fun. Right, and, and I will, I would step on this. Shoes. Right, right. Step right. on his shoes. He right. got on the new, the, the new Harden. Step, right, on Harden. Right. Step on James Harden's shoes. Right. Well, it won't work with the NBA players because they get free shoes. <laughs> PJ Tucker, them, they buy their shoes. Step on the scarf. Right. Got them right. shoes up, right? But in high school, you do that. Start looking down. They start doing shit like. Yeah. As soon as a touch that, every every time down court, scuff it. Yeah, scuff it. The just gonna worry about the shoes all day. Yeah. That's uh, but that's, that shit works. It's yeah. real. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I coached at the high school level this year, and like just to see the the way that that mental gets so frazzled yeah. so quickly on simple shit. Simple shit. But I made a couple shots. So I'm doing all this yeah. shit and whatever. I don't agree with that either. But no, I agree. No, I agree. Not agree. But what, what? The shot? No, when you make the shot and now they're doing the arrows oh, and whatever. My thing is like, bro, you're shooting 18 percent from three. And, and, and we and, keep it stats. And you were one for eleven. <laughs> yeah. And and my thing is that too. When when you're when you're a kid and there's kids out there too. Right. If you get so excited after you make a shot. Right, that lets me know you get really sad when you miss shots. That's, that's the point, right? Yeah. So if you get really hyped and you're celebrating, you're yeah, right, right, every right. play. <laughs> that means when you're missing, you go into the tinker, right? Right. So that means you're a fifty-fifty player, right? Right. Which I'm not worried about you anymore, right? Because you're gonna miss more than you're gonna make. And once you miss shots, your game is done. Right. I need players that 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 do this, right? When that ball goes in, you're just worried about getting on defense. Like, but you act like you do this shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And to me, that's more right. Like, there's impressive. a difference between confidence and excitement. Mm-hmm. But that's more impressive, and you have more respect for those type of guys. Where like, damn, this dude is just locked in, and this, this, like, I'm supposed to go in. Those yeah, guys, so like, I like, love. that's yeah. like, that's like Katie after every shot. He, yeah, yeah, right. dancing. Like, right, right. right. Bitch, you, bitch. I act like you. Right. Can score four guys who score forty every night. Don't sit there celebrate nah. after every bucket. Nah, you just remind me of the f- team manager. <laughs> <laughs> but all you guys, <laughs> you, technically, you guys are team manager. As soon as the team manager in, everybody's getting ready to get right, excited. Right, he makes right. a shot. Everybody start dancing and fall. Don't do that shit with me, bro. <laughs> all right. So last question for you. You, you got it. You know your shoot that came out with Jordan. Yep. I'm hearing you got another one on the way. Yeah. We're not going to get into specifics. I understand how it is when you deal with big companies, branded deals and all that good stuff. But you've got several branded deals now. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about NIL earlier. Yeah. So what advice would you give to college kids in terms of how to navigate these branded deals? Because for anybody, I started getting branded deals a few years ago. It's like, oh, shit, they want to rock with me or they want to rock with me. Right. But then you start getting to the numbers, specifics, starting to really understand what the contract you're signing is. Right. 
And a lot of these kids, I look at like Angel Reese and they're like, oh, she's got a $1.3 million valuation. Right. I'm kind of laughing like 1.3, like shit. Like, like if I'm running her shit, we getting that shit up to two or three easy. Right. Just looking at her numbers and metrics. Right. But how do you, what advice would you give to these kids about just how to navigate branded deals in this NIL space and making sure they're picking the right deals and how to just even look at those contracts and make sure they know what they're signing? I say just it's it's not always about the brand that's going to give you the most money. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it is a blessing to be with Nike. And I love Nike. You know what I mean? But there are other companies that are shoe competitors that have offered me more. But I went with a brand that I felt like that was good for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the same, you know, I, I'm the first athlete that's not a professional to sign with Red Bull. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, that was a, so you got the plug. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> got the plug. So that was a blessing. Um, I'm with Continental Tire. I'm with... I'm just with some, uh, you know, I'm an influencer for the NBA, you know, which is a blessing, you know what I mean? So it's it's not always about getting a lot of money. It's about getting with the company that's going to actually brand you to help your brand become global. You know what I mean? So like, like you know, I did run the racks where I, I broke uh, Craig Hodges' uh, record with Red Bull. Um, I'm, I went to Egypt. I was the first person ever to shoot in front of a pyramid, which cost a lot of money. I didn't get the money. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, the thing that I understand about business it's about, it's not always about that. It's like with Michael Jordan, like when he first started with Nike, it was small, you know what I mean? Then it got, then it, then it blew up. So it's like, I'm doing something as well in a month and a half that when you guys see it, you know, it's gonna be un unbelievable, but this is something we've been planning for a year, mm -hmm. but the whole world's gonna know about it, you know? So it's just, if you're a college player out there and you're looking to make money, just keep being yourself, you know? And understand that social media, it's a, it's, it's like a LinkedIn. Don't be on there like me. I, when I go back to DC, I hang out around the way my man's and them hanging out, but I'm not posting people in my stories drinking. Cause I don't drink or smoke. No disrespect to anybody that does, okay. but like you None can't taken, be, yeah, I do you both. can't, you can't be a college, you can't be a college player trying to post you, you you're, you're hanging out on the block or you drinking at a club or stuff. Keep everything professional on social media. You know what I mean? If you want somebody to take you serious, because now it sucks. I don't agree with this, but they're watching kids now in middle school yeah. to evaluate yeah. them. Yeah. It's just, it suck. Yes. I, th I think middle school, just to go off subject, since we're on here, I think middle school rankings are dumb. I think all that stuff is dumb to attack a kid that young. I think at that age, you should be having fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think we turned out, not saying the kids aren't as good, but I think our generation was so good at sports because it was fun playing Pop Warner and yeah, doing yeah, this, yeah. going to the, the championship. Now it's like a kid is in fifth grade. He's he's we're treating him like he's getting ready for the Redskins game. Yep. But it's, it's wild because when we were coming up, they had rankings, right? But them shits were in magazines, and then yeah. it was kind of the birth. Of Not the middle internet. school, bro. No, I'm, I'm no, they, they did. They did. Like, yeah. He's the number one seventh grader, whatever. Yeah. I'm just yeah. like, yeah. 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 Because you would hear that shit, but you didn't have to see it all the time. Yeah. We were still living normal lives, yeah. going home playing with our friends. Yeah. But the, the bad part about the ranking is parents. I know. It's just parents. It ain't actually like it ain't certified college or NBA. Yeah. It's other yeah. parents yeah. ranking. I know. And that's the that's the bad part about For sure. the ranking. And there's just a little things that need to be tweaked in ranking where rank kids by their age, not their grade. I like that. Right? Yeah. So now let's say you have a, a guy who's holding back. Right. Right? So he can be ranked number one. Right. Well, at some point, if you're ranking by the age, there's going to be a point in time where he's no longer on the board. Right. I like that. He's no longer on the board. So if he's 19 and the rankings at 18 and he's right. a senior, he's no longer involved, which means you hurt, you hurt his stock. Right. Yeah. Which once that trickles down, it makes those it parents one. are going to realize, oh, I'm, I'm shit. not going to keep him back My, six times. I'm not going to keep yeah. him back six times because at some point he's not going to be ranked because the cutoff ranking is 18, yeah. which now... Might be on to something. No. It, 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 it changes. When you drive to school as a freshman, I'm already like, wait a minute. <laughs> but it's nothing wrong with that too. There's no so like, I went to private. So like I said, we all went to National Christian and we couldn't afford. The, like I had scholarships to math at Gonzaga. We couldn't afford those schools. So they do get sponsors yeah. for you to have stuff. I, I think if a kid messed up, you know, and he go to a school that's about the, that the kid's paying 20 a year or 15 a year. I mean, yeah, get that boy a car. Get that no, boy. What I'm saying is, if you a freshman driving a car, that means yeah. your ass is like 16 and a half, 17. Oh, you know, I get it. As age, opposed to being, age, 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 being, age, being age. 14, like, we, yeah, no, I need a nah, ride still. Nah, nah, nah. I, I just look at, like, when, when it comes to when it comes to parents and kids, th this is going to be a real war. It is, man. It is going to be a war because kids want to be loyal to their parents, and the problem is 
money is involved and this money can change your parents' life. Right. Yeah. And they're going to use you to do it. And I'm telling every kid, I don't care who your parent is. Right. I really don't, you know, at this point, F them um, <laughs> if they don't agree with this. Right. Be careful of the agreements you sign right. that's coming from your parents. Right. Right. When you turn 18, make sure you have a lawyer involved before you write anything down because now parents are, because you can get paid, mm-hmm. they're making you sign promissory notes on your name mm-hmm. and not realizing that you're going to do it because it's your parents. Mm-hmm. Not understanding that this is lifetime type shit mm-hmm. where you're paying three, four, five percent to your parent on mm-hmm. everything you do for the rest of your life. I agree. Right? So that's there, wild, man. Yeah, there's shit yeah, going. It's, I mean, it's, that's it's what's going it. down right there's now. There's things that's going down. Like I, yeah. I, I've heard some 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 wild shit. There's NBA players in there that are. I'll, I'll, I'll explain how it sounds, right? Right, right. The, the family did a deal with the agent. Oh, I know how it works. That you get this player, but we want 20 grand a month to have him, mm-hmm. right? 20 grand a month from you to have him. Well, technically, the 20 month doesn't come from the agent. It comes from the player. So the agent charges the player that, mm-hmm. right? Well, that comes with interest. So now you get 20, Right. You're giving, you're, you're the agent, you're mm-hmm. giving him 20, you're charging interest to me. Mm-hmm. So you're charging me 2,500, mm-hmm. I mean 25,000. Mm-hmm. If I just paid him 20, I would save 5,000. So it's like, I'm getting double. And if I leave you, that comes with a penalty. I really because know. once I find out, like, oh, hell no. Mm-hmm. You done made a deal with me that if you leave me within the first these years, that I have to pay you this upfront money mm. that I don't even have anymore. Nah. You know, so there's deals that are being done behind these kids' it's back. Real right that's now. really it's later real on. right now. Parents out there, get your shit together. Get your shit together. <laughs> Love your kid. Listen, if they it's your, your kid. Off, it's that's your, your kid. Hey, listen, if you are a mother or a father, right, you cannot get child support from your, your child. <laughs> right? I'm just saying, it's like, you're, you're my child and you need to support me. Please, Stop, that support. Shit, right? Right, right. Stop that shit, right? Stop that shit. You're, you're supposed to be putting your children in a position for them them to take care of their children. Right. That's how it works. Not to take care of you. You're not raising your kid to take care of you. Right. That's wild. I'm sorry. That's not you. Oh, you know, you got these kids. Who, what's the first thing you can do with your money? Oh, buy my mama a house. Buy my daddy a house. Buy my, no. That's not how it's supposed to be mm-hmm. done. That's moving backwards. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it, okay, have your parents move with you, mm-hmm. right? For the, for try, the you know, try it like yeah. that. You know, you know, like the, all we'll you guys buy us to work. I mean, yeah. I know the money's changing. These kids are getting seven, eight million, right? Just remember, Michael Jordan buy his first house until he was eight years into the league. Dang, he was living in a condo, right? I mean, you you just gotta understand. Yeah. Save, save your first. Get in, right. get a condo close. Like, think about your career. Get a condo or something close to the arena. Right, where you can go in, access, work on your game, mm-hmm. four years, that's the bag. Mm-hmm. That's the bag. You should be trying to save as much as you can the first four years because you don't know what's gonna happen after. No matter what you're getting paid, no matter what kind of endorsements you got, try to save as much as you can. Have a little fun, put yourself in a budget, 10, 20K a month, right? Think about what that is, 10, 20K a month, that's a lot of fucking money, mm-hmm. right? 10, 10, don't have 42 people <laughs> no. around you, like you just, Manage, learn how to like mm-hmm. process things, and then once you get that two, three hundred million, now you have you're in a whole different ballgame. Yeah. But if you live in your first four years like you're a 200, 300 million dollar man, yeah. you're, you're living check to check. Yeah, that's, that's real. shit. Well, Lethal Shooter, we appreciate yeah. you Thank pulling you up to the me. show, man. We yeah. appreciate all the game and intellect and wisdom. Yeah. Hopefully, some of y'all soaked it in, even if you're old and your jumper's broke. You can still put that work in. <laughs> but the young kids especially, y'all really need to listen. Don't go out there trying to be Steph until you put that Steph Curry-like work in. Yes. I think it's one of the main things. Also, keep your eyes on your parents. You never know what they're going to do. <laughs> you know, I know that's, that's don't just so bad shit. right now. Yeah, so bad bad. Shit. Don't you know? these parents under the bus <laughs> get a third party to look at? Hey, we're about to lose all these followers. <laughs> parents like, yeah, I'm not going to hear my son. Can you see this episode? Yeah, watching this shit. <laughs> but this has been another episode of No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. We'll be back with more very soon. 